G'day you bloody dickheads, the vaping fucking bogan, back once again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all doing good as bloody gold. Got ourselves a new box, a new box from Segeli. Haven't reviewed anything from Segeli for quite some fucking time. Probably not since the 213, which we we know there's a bit of a fucking hoo-ha around all of that. Uh, it didn't perform very well, and when some reviewers pointed that out and showed the fucking testing, i.e. Daniel from DJ LSB Vapes, uh, Segeli got a little bit fucking butt hurt, threatened some legal action against him and all this sort of shit. And I said I'd never review anything from Segeli until they apologised to Daniel for that. They have since apologised for that. They have released a whole bunch of mods since then. I just haven't picked any of them up. But we have the moon box. The Vasigo Moonbox from Segeli. Have a look at that. Pretty little fucking thing. Now I've got the uh, Manta Special Edition Matte Black on here from Advocan with a little Half Moon Drip Tip getting some matchy match action going on. Very fucking nice. Uh, but it does come actually in a kit with the uh, the moon shot, and if you look at the tin, and then you look at the old moon shot tin, you can see the similarities there. Now the moon shot was a fucking nice little uh, RTA, really great fra flavour, it was a fucking cunt to build on. I'm not going to really talk at all about that today, if you want to know about the moon shot RTA, there's a link in the description to my review from way back. But they do come in a kit, but today we're going to talk about just the moon box. Now. It's a 200 watt box, they say, but it's not a wattage box. It's uh, it's a variable voltage box, or what they like to call a PWM, or a pulse width modulation box. So you can adjust the voltage on the little dial here, all right? So you can adjust the voltage there. They have put wattage on there, but it's a load of rubbish because it's in voltage. So, you know, you kind of adjust it a little bit differently to your normal wattage mods. There's no fucking screen on here. It does have uh, a bunch of, you know, protections in here. There's short circuit protection. It won't fire below 0.1 ohms. Um, all that sort of stuff that you get with a regulated device, but it's not a regular wattage device. And it's not a mechanical mod. It's uh, it's regulated voltage. So, enough fucking chit chat. Let's take it for a fucking rip, shall we? Uh, I got some something. I forget what the calls are in here. But anyway, let's go. I've got it at about... Mm, I've got it at the, the 100 watt mark, which which isn't 100 watts, obviously, you know, it depends on the resistance of the coil that you've got versus the voltage that you've applied to the uh, to the coil, and that's going to give you the wattage. So the wattage on here, it might as well not fucking be there, because it's not the wattage. Puts out like a cheap fucking slut cunts. It's absolutely fucking awesome. I love this box. I love PWM boxes. I think pulse switch modulation. I like voltage boxes. They are always, you know, less likely to sort of malfunction than a regular sort of uh, wattage device. And they're very simple. There's no screen. It's just a dial. It's just adjusted to taste. Sub ohm your fucking dick off. Um, and it's made of tin. Yeah, it's a bit different. So it's sort of taking um, notes from the uh, the original Moonbox uh, Moonshot packaging, which a bunch of cunts turned these little metal tins into mods. They put 510s in them, little switches, and turned them into little DIY mods. So I think Segeli kind of liked that idea and uh, came up with the Moonbox. Very lightweight, packs a punch. And they look fucking the tits. They come in a bunch of different variations. We'll see in the up and close. But before we get into that, let's talk fucking advocacy cunts. I know it's boring shit, but please go to the information in the description and join the calls to action, the fights for your rights to fucking vape. Because if we don't do that, then our community is going to be torn apart by the powers to be. So, do that and have a fucking beer, which we'll do right now, cunts. So this one here is from Oscar Blues Brewery, which I, uh, I've had a bunch of their beers in the past. I'm not sure if this is a new one or it's just a new one to the uh, to the Australians, but it's called Fugly. How's that? It's a fucking fugly beer. Uh, Yuzu and Ugly Fruit IPA. I'm not too sure what the fuck that means, whether there's a fruit called Yuzu and there's an, I think there's an ugly fruit. I definitely heard of a, an ugly fruit. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, infused with uh, yuzu and ugly fruits, and it's an IPA. It's 5.8 uh, fucking percent. Oscar Blues Breweries uh, brewing over in Longmont in Colorado, USA. So anyway, let's see how she fucking goes. There you go, dickheads. Nice frothy bit of head there. Sort of slightly murky, fairly clear complexion. Orangish. Oh yeah, smells nice and fruity. Smells like a tropical fucking fruit salad, dickheads. Let's get that fucking hair out of here. Fucking cheers.
Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, there's a bit of sediment in there from the fruits. Definitely taste that um, that fruitiness. I'm not too sure what the fuck a, a, a yuzu or an ugly fruit is supposed to taste like, but it definitely has a very nice fruity fucking um, complexion. Complexion. Fruity fucking makeup. Mmm. Yeah, nice and hoppy. It's definitely got that IPA kind of uh, bite there. Nice malts as well, but plenty of, uh, of fruits that I haven't tasted before. It definitely tastes a little different. You know, different to your stone fruits and your fucking pineapples and your, your other sort of shit that you often get in IPAs. This is fruity, but it's not familiar fruits. That's nice. Pair up with a little juicy. What am I vaping on? I'm vaping on some Kurong fucking cola. A bit of my own Bogan Brews juice line which is now available in the United States if you can't want to pick it up. It's at Elevated Vaping. It's also in the UK, New Zealand, and Australia. So I'll put links to all of that down below. But anyway, it's a straight-up fucking cola, as the name would suggest. A little bit fizzy, a little bit of uh, sort of um, traditional cola taste there, a little bit of candy cola. Yeah, as always, the cola always goes well with an IPA. Delicious. Mm. Yeah, the higher sort of citrusy notes that cola has goes really well with the sort of higher citrusy notes of IPAs. And then that sort of, you know, more caramel kind of notes, the bottom end of the cola kind of goes well with the biscuitiness, the malts of a beer. Always tastes good. Anyway, dickheads, another two. Let's jump down in the up and bloody clothes. We'll have a squiz at the Basigo Moonbox, and then we'll jump back up and give you the pros, cons, price, and everything fucking else. Now, there are a bunch of variations of this lovely little fucking mod. So you've got the, the two black and red versions. As you can see here, you've got a, a skull face and you've got a little boy face. You can obviously uh, pick and choose which one you want when you're purchasing them. The blue and orange, as far as I can see from the internet, is only fucking available in the skull for the, uh, the blue one and the little boy face for the orange one, all right? So they only come in those two variations. These can, you can get them in fucking both. And yeah, really nice fucking artwork. I have to say, um, you know, whoever's done this has done a fucking nice job. They look really fucking neat um, and just and just fucking cool. And as you can see, the uh, the images kind of all match up nicely with the whole clouds. They've done a good job here, actually, of blending the two images into into one with this little uh, strip in the middle. But yeah, really fucking nice, vibrant colors. I just think they look dope. They look like little fucking uh, tobacco tins, little Altoid tins. Uh, so yeah, we'll have a quick squeeze. There's the orange one. There we go, same on both sides. Alrighty. And you got, uh, whoop. And you got the two little fucking black and red versions. I really like the skull, but you know, that's just fucking me. They're identical, I think, in every other way, except for the face. And then you've got the lovely blue version here, which is that sort of Tiffany blue, cayenne, cyan, whatever you want to fucking call it. Really, really nice. So, let's fucking go over the ins and outs, the bits and fucking bobs, dickhead. So, we'll start up the top. Uh, got a pretty decent 510, although I don't think it's the best that Segeli has fucking done. Had no issues with it. Really nice, springy, gold-plated 510. You got a stainless steel threading on it, but it is mounted into plastic. So, you know, this sort of ABS um, injection mold plastic, obviously a concern that over time that this, uh, this stainless steel um, starts to, to break out of that. Um, and the other thing, it's just a little bit, there's a little bit of side to move, side to side movement on that 510. Again, you know, I just think Segeli have done better 510s in the past. They've done some really good ones. But uh, this is, again, no issues, no fucking problems, but it, uh, it doesn't strike me as the most durable 510. Just to quickly show you what you can fucking fit on there. Um, you can fit like a 25 millimeter Addy without really any overhang from the, the uh, lip, you know, the edge of the uh, atomizer as it sort of starts to taper off. That's 25 millimeters and that looks good. This is the Kennedy 25, it looks good on there with that, uh, you know, just starting to curve off away from the edge of the RDA. If you go bigger than 25 millimeters, well look, it doesn't overhang the edge of the box too much, but it will come over that lip. So your Oma Miser plus 30 millimeter RTA, and as you can see, it's not really overhanging the edge of the box too much, just a, a mil or so, you know, a couple of mils either side, but it still looks pretty good. So, you know, nothing on this side. I, I don't know, 30 millimeter Addy, 
That looks pretty decent on there. Not complaining too much about that. So you can fit a fairly nice big atomizer without it looking too ugly. But yeah, 25 is probably the, the sweet spot if you don't like it to overhang the edge of the, uh, the curves. Rightio, so uh, we've got a pretty simple rest of it. You've got a fire button over here. You've got one of these little LED lights here and another one here. This one is the one that will flash, you know, when you don't have an atomizer connected or when your batteries are getting low and that sort of thing. This one here really only flashes when you plug it in to charge it um, and things like that. But square fire button, nice clicky feel to it. No complaints with that. Nice size. Everything's worked there. Then you've got this fucking potentiometer, okay? So this is where you adjust your voltage, okay? I want to make that very clear that unless Segelli have done something groundbreakingly new with the potentiometer and, and pulse width modulation, which I'm pretty fucking sure they haven't, this is not going to give you wattage. And they've written on here 50, 100, 150, and 200 watts. This is just a, a very, you know, very stupid thing to put on a pulse width modulation because, again, 50 watts, okay, so let's say it's, it's, it's lower setting, which is supposed to be 2 um, volts. You know, 2 volts applied to a 1 ohm, a 0.1 ohm coil, you know, is very different to, you know, two volts applied to a one ohm coil. So putting 50 watts on here is just fucking dumb. Um, like the other potentiometers we've seen from previous manufacturers, don't, don't bother putting that on there. Just have, you know, just have a dial, you know, this just has from, you know, 50, zero to 100, doesn't give you any wattage indicators. Um, you know, when you put wattage on here, it confuses people, okay? It's going to make them think that they're getting 50 watts. They're not, okay? They might be, depending on the resistance of their coils, but, you know, it, it's just dumb. You should have just left it with nothing on there or like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like Tesla have done in the, in the past. You know, putting wattage, I think, is just misleading. But anyway, it is what it is. It starts at 2 volts at the 50 watt mark, and then you dial it up to the maximum 7.5 volts um, at 200. Alrighty, so yeah, just basically if you're new to pulse width modulation, if you're new to PWM boxes, if you if you haven't really used uh, variable voltage before, then um, I would suggest just starting at 50 and then working your way up until you find your sweet spot. Alright dickheads, just increase it slowly until you find where you like to vape it and it's not burning for you or anything like that. Rightio, uh, micro USB port as I mentioned, if I already said it, don't fucking use that for charging. Um, you know, you take your batteries out and charge them externally. And that's about it, dickheads. There's not much else to see on this box. If we pop her open, you can do it on either side. So you've got one panel here, and you've got another panel over here. There's no real sort of cutouts for your, your fingernail to get into. Would have liked to have seen that. Um, but getting them off isn't too hard at all. As you can see, they just pop away. But they've got a good amount of tension. They're not just going to fall off on you. Um, which is good. One thing I would have liked to have seen is something a little bit more durable than just foam in here. I feel like this is going to get brittle and dry and crack and, and crum crumble away like, you know, foam does um, over time. Whereas, you know, something a little bit more um, durable would have been better, maybe a, a rubber or something like that. But either way, it works just fine. Battery sit in here really nice and snug. Let's grab a couple of those cunts. Uh, got some Sony VTC6s, I think these are. Um, got some old dirty bastard wraps on here. Shout out to those cunts over in the UK. They make some decent looking fucking wraps. So yeah, you just slot your batteries in. You've got a little battery ribbon there, which works from both sides. Um, positive going in this way. And uh, yeah, as you can see, you get a little bit of flashing on the lights. The ribbon's a little long, so you've got to kind of tuck it away. But yeah, even with batteries in there, super fucking light. As you can see, there's a blue light that will flash at you when you're vaping and when you don't have something attached. And uh, yeah, dickheads, I don't know whether there's um, a fuck ton more to show you on these cunts. They're, they're very simple and basic. They are made of tin. Okay, so just be aware of that, that you can dent and, uh, and scratch and chip these a lot easier than, you know, some of the other materials used in mods. But they look fucking really cool. They do make for a very lightweight vape. And uh, yeah, I think over time, the character that they're going to get as they age and get dinged up and scratched and everything else uh, is going to be a nice, nice little fucking thing ski. So anyway, dickheads, I think that about wraps it up. Let's jump back up top. Let's give you the fucking pros, the fucking cons and all the rest of that good shit. So there you go, dickheads, a bit of a squiz at the moon box. And as you can see, it's a pretty dope looking little fucking piece of kit. I have to say that the, the finish, the tin and the artwork that they've done here, I just like it. I just want to grab this fucking mod and I want to vape it. It's just, it's just one of those mods that just, just makes me want to fucking pick it up. Do 
very, very fucking much like this little box. I think, I'll be straight up, I think this is the best thing that Segeli has done uh, this fucking year for sure. The best thing that I've uh, had from Segeli in a long while. And you know, I haven't reviewed anything from Segeli for quite uh, some time, but I've definitely picked up, played with, and sold plenty of different Segelis over the last set of 12 months um, in the shop that I've, uh, I've worked at. So. You know, I've been been seeing the Segelis, but there's nothing that's really made me go, that's fucking cool, until this cunt. Um, yeah, best, maybe the best Segeli mod that they've ever fucking made. Is that subjective? But I personally would take this over anything that they've done in the past. But we're getting ahead of ourselves, dickheads. Let's talk fucking pros and bloody cons. So... Big pro for me is the artwork, as I said, the, the, the paint job and the um, the image, the artwork that they're fucking done with. I'm not sure whether it's an artist that they've got outside of Segeli to do this. I would assume so because Segeli, you know, I, I doubt that, that any of their employees are doing this. It definitely looks like somebody with um, some artistic fucking talent has, uh, has come up with this. And obviously very reminiscent of the moon shot as well. Um, so, so yeah, which was, um, which was a collab between Supremo. So I don't know whether... If there's any connection between this and, and the old uh, artwork. But anyway, big pro for me is the fucking um, the images and the paint job. I really fucking like the tin. Now, the fact that it's tin is going to be a subjective thing. I personally like the fact that it's like an Altoids tin or it's like an old tobacco tin. Um, you know, when I smoked, I, ro I, I smoked Roll Your Own. And, uh, you know, I kept my tobacco in a tin, you know, very much like this. One of the old tobacco Dr. Pat tins, that kind of thing. You know, and they age, they get dinged up, they get dents and scratches and wear marks and everything else. But all of that kind of adds character to those tobacco tins. And I feel like this is going to do the same thing. So I'm kind of excited to use this over the next um, you know six months and see how it gets beat up and and um, and weathered and worn and just gets a bit of character to it I personally think that's a fucking pro um, yeah PWM box as well. That's a big fucking pro for me. I like simple things. I like stuff that's less likely to break and have less, you know, things to go wrong with it. When you've got a screen and a full chip, you know, with variable wattage and all the rest of it, you've got more things that can break down on it. Um, PWMs, traditionally from the, from the PWMs that I've experienced, you know, have less issues. And, you know, they're just, they're just simpler. You know, I don't need a big fucking screen. I don't need temp control. I don't need fucking, you know, menu systems and all that sort of shit. You know, this is simple. It's easy. It's just voltage. I adjust it to my taste and I sub my fucking dick off. So for me, being a PWM box, that is a big fucking pro. Uh, what else do I fucking like about it? Um, the lightweightness of this box, you know, granted there is a plastic middle to it and a tin exterior, uh, so there's definitely some durability factors there compared to other boxes, but this is so fucking light in the pocket, you know, particularly for me, for me in Australia at the moment, we're coming into summer, I'm going to be winning, wearing plenty of shorts and shit without a belt on, and, and this is going to be less likely to drag my pants down because it's so fucking lightweight, so big, big pro for me is just the lightweight factor of it. It's got loads of protections in there, so you can, you know, adjust the voltage, you know, it's different to your variable wattage, but it's still got all the same protections, short circuit, you know, overheating protection, um, you know, too much uh, voltage, all the rest of it, so you've got some safety features in there um, without going a full, you know, variable wattage device. Ah, uh, what else is a fucking pro-ski? The, the panels, both doors come off, you know, so you could uh, you could mix and match panels, you could get two of these, you could put uh, one, you know, colour on one side, one colour on the other. Maybe in the future, Segeli will release different um, plates for it, different panels, that would be really fucking cool. Uh, so yeah, I really like the fact that it just pops off plates and everything else. Um, and build quality seems pretty good. It's a cheap box, we'll get to that in a fucking minute, but you know, in terms of what it is for what it costs, I think it's a damn fucking, um, you know, well-built box for, for, for how cheap it is. Yeah, I don't know whether there's a whole lot more else I can fucking say. Oh, you can fit a, a fairly wide atomizer on here. Granted, the tin starts to, to taper off a bit, so, you know, you will get a little bit of overhang with the tapering, but you could go quite wide um, with your atomizer and not really overhang the edge of the box. Or in my case here, with the bubble window, even though my atomizer is, a, is sitting nice and flush with the edge of the, the, the tapering, the, the bubble window doesn't stick out further than the actual side of the mod. So knock it over and I'm not going to crack my fucking glass. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm just uh, fishing for fucking pros now. Let's talk fucking cons. <laughs> Con
Cons-wise, dickheads, there's not really a whole lot here. Um, the most obvious con for me is the very dumb, dumb, dumb fucking dis markings of, of wattage. Those are, are basically in a, you know, they're, they're completely fucking pointless having 50, 100, 150, and 200 watts on there. Yes, they might be around about the mark, you know, on your, on your wattage, but it's going to be dependent on your fucking resistance of your coils. And we all know this from PWM boxes, unless this is somehow working very differently to other PWM boxes, which I highly fucking doubt, but I don't have the means to test, you know, wattage output on this thing you know, depending on the on the resistance of the of the coil. But as far as I know from PWM, you know, experience, you know, the wattage that you're actually outputting is going to change dependent on the resistance or the ohms of your coil. So just bear that in mind. In my opinion, completely ignore the 50, 100, 150, 200 watts and just start at 50 and then just adjust it to taste, okay? And if it starts getting dry, then back it off, okay? Because you don't really know the wattage that you're getting, so you're not gonna really have to take a tank from your wattage mod and put it on here and just dial it in, okay? You're gonna need to adjust it to taste. Those familiar with PWMs will know exactly what I'm fucking talking about, but I fucking hate it when I see companies putting wattages on PWMs. It's pointless, it's fucking stupid. So get rid of that. Um, the other cons, and it's more of a subjective con, would just be durability. You know, it's a tin box, you know, you can dent it, you could scratch it, um, you know, you could crush it, you know, all that sort of shit. Um, you know, a lot more than your, your, your aluminium fucking bodies. It also has a plastic middle to it, so if you drop it a bunch of times, you know, there is the chance that eventually you will crack the um, the plastic. I've dropped this a, a quite a few times though, um, and I haven't had anything, you know, you know crack or, or break on it. So. You know, I'm not really too concerned, particularly when you when you hear the fucking price dickheads. So apart from the the dumb fucking uh, wattage uh, markings and the fact that it is you know not a super durable box, I can't really find a whole lot more wrong with this other than maybe the foam in here that that could wear off over time. As you know, foam you know it's not a particularly durable product um, you know substance, so you know, that could wear off over time. You know, apart from that, the only other thing is you kind of need some nails to get um, the tin off. There's not really a cutout anywhere that allows you to get your nail underneath the lip of the, um, the tin. So I would have liked maybe down the bottom, just put some little little cutouts in the plastic here so that people can get their finger in underneath it a little bit easier. Um, that would have been fucking perfect. But it's a basic PWM box with a really fucking nice, you know, tin finish. Um, there's nothing that I can really find here that I would complain about. And trust me, I'm not the biggest fan of Segeli in the in the past. So if there was something to complain about here, I would fucking tell you cunts. I think Segeli has really done a very, very fucking good job of putting together a cheap... Yeah, let's get to the price and we'll, we'll sum it up in a minute. Price. Now these were sent directly to me from uh, Segeli, so fucking cheers, dickheads. I will be passing on um, these in some giveaways, the extras I've got. I'm going to be giving away one of them in my uh, Patreon giveaway happening at the end of this month, so if you want to grab that. And the others will go in a big giveaway coming up very soon. Price, $33 US is what you're paying for the, the kit, for the mod and the fucking Moonshot RTA. In the UK, you're looking at around about 28 pounds, and here in Australia, you're paying about 45 fucking schmackos. For a mod and a tank, that's fucking ridiculous. All you're gonna need is a set of batteries for this, so for 65 bucks Australian, you'd have yourself a full setup. Um, tank, mod, and batteries for 65 bucks Australian. That's fucking ridiculous. That's awesome. You know, and in the US, you're probably talking, you know, even even less than that. You're only talking 33 plus, what are they, six, seven bucks a battery in the US. Fucking nothing for a full kit. So price-wise, Segeli fucking nailed this. There is very, very few mods with a tank that will cost you less than this. So yeah, well done on the fucking price. <laughs> but yeah, getting back to summing up, dickheads. Yes, it's not gonna be the most durable box on the market, but for the price that you're paying and for how cool it looks and for how well it performs, and it hits fucking hard, you know? Um, I feel like it's giving me the full seven and a half volts if I want to, you know, I can run a series, um, you know, uh, build on here and it hits just as hard. Um, well, not quite just as hard, you know, very close to, you know, a, a mechanical series box, seven and a half volts. So I think, you know, performance wise versus price versus just how fucking cool it is, 
Yeah, I'm going to grab myself another one. I'm going to give away three of these, and I'm going to buy myself a fucking uh, black one, I reckon. Because this is just fucking dope. This is just a cool box. Anyway, dickheads, I could sit here and fucking uh, harp on about it. But yeah, for me, this is a massive, massive tick uh, for Sigeli. And, you know, a big redemption, a big fucking comeback for considering how average um, Sigeli's mods, I think, have been over the last 12 months. They really haven't put anything out that I think has been exceptional and has been at the level that they were two years ago. So uh, hats off to you cunts for doing this one. You've done fucking well. Nice little comeback there, dickheads. Anyway, let's uh, get the fuck out of here. So I'll put some links in the description to a few places selling these in Australia, New, um, the US and the UK, but do some Googling and find yourself the best price. But yeah, honestly, you, you're not going to pay too much for this. It, it's it's a, it's a cheap, well-priced box. I'll include the usual links to my Instagram and Facebook if you want to check out what I'm fucking doing outside of the YouTube videos. And if you want to uh, support my channel, please fucking do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you turn on that little bell icon there so you actually get notified when videos come up. But if you really want to hit me where it fucking counts, then uh, hit the Patreon page. Pledge a few bucks each month. I do prizes, giveaways, and that sort of shit, and content you won't fucking see here. And all of that keeps me independent. I don't accept funding, sponsorships, affiliate links, or any sort of monetary influence from the vape companies that send me products. We keep it rigid dig and 100% honest. But to keep doing that, well, we need a bit of public support. So do what you fucking can, but if you can't, that's all fucking good. Sit back, sub on your fucking dicks off, sub on your fucking tits off. But above all cunts, stay off the bloody stinkies. That is what I'm fucking here for. It doesn't matter whether it's a tin box fucking PWM or a regular old uh, wattage box, as long as you're not banging the bungers, that's all that fucking matters. Cheers for tuning in and cheery fucking oh. Fucking um, future fuck. <laughs>